Good morning. Good morning. It's Morning Devos with Pastor Jen. And this morning we are on location at Wesley Acres. And this is my friend Todd. Hi, everyone. I know. You're like, he's new. I'm like, he is new. Uh, so this is his first time on Morning Devos. And uh, I was at a pastor's conference and we just got chatting and we were talking about uh, ministry. And I was like, Todd, would you share some of your story with us? Because it's just, I'm just so very encouraged. And and so Todd and I actually were youth ministry um, people back in the day in cohorts. Kingston, cohorts. <laughs> and, uh, and so we both moved into that lead role. And so tell us a little bit about that journey from being in youth ministry into the lead position. Oh, that's a long time. Okay. That's a long story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I was a youth pastor at Bethel Church when you were a youth pastor over at Verona yep. Free Methodist. Yeah. In Kingston. And, uh, but you would be in Verona. Uh, yeah, let's see. I had a long journey because uh, I, I, after that, I left full time ministry and became, uh, you know, worked. Uh, we went to Korea, wow. taught English, and then we traveled. Uh, then we came back and worked at Camp Iowa for a bit. Right. Uh, I did that for two years, uh, did a sort of a gap year discipleship program, and, uh, and that was good, but then felt really called that I wanted to work. Um, well, at the time I would have said I wanted to work among the poor and that kind of stuff. Right. So, so uh, I uh, we started a uh, community house called uh, the House Famous. We called it. We were on uh, right on um, York Street in Kingston. Okay. And we started. So it was like a, an intentional community. We lived together with uh, um, some other Christians, and we invited uh, like homeless people to eat with us or stay with us if they needed it, and. Uh, uh, so we did that for three years and then experienced <laughs> some uh, pretty solid uh, burnout or compassion fatigue and uh, and so uh, and uh, at that time I was attending next church and working also as an occupational therapist and wow. on what's called an act team an assertive community treatment team so essentially we worked with severely mentally ill people uh, people with severe mental illness sorry uh, and uh, help them to stay in the community right. so I deliver meds and do all kinds of things like that and uh, over time I would go down and visit uh, Al Doziger at right. uh, Russell Church right. and because uh, he's a friend of mine and uh, and it seemed that every time I was there I was able to sort of uh, like solve a problem or deal with a crisis or this whatever so cool. just because of some of my training right and uh, and then he started getting the ideas like, man, we could really use someone with some mental health training in, in this neighborhood uh, and at this church because um, Russell Church is in uh, what was at the time when it was planted, it was in the 11th poorest neighborhood in all of Canada. Really? And uh, which is weird for Kingston, it's quite an affluent town, right? right. But uh, Kingston sort of concentrates its poverty. And uh, uh, so I, uh, so he, he would invite me down or have me speak or, uh, you know, and uh, slowly he was able to convince his board that uh, we needed an urban missionary in the, in the neighborhood. Right. And so they, they call, and the whole denomination, they got behind it and created this, did. this, uh, uh, position called the uh, urban missionary uh, uh, urban missionary role and uh, I uh, so I, I did that I did a race support and uh, and actually I was really well supported by the denomination um, both financially and uh, and emotionally and uh, I don't know logistically yeah. and uh, so uh, we we tried it out and uh, so I would sort of wander the streets uh, evangelizing and starting wow. starting Bible studies and uh, uh, so we sort of worked it that Al was in charge of the church part of the ministry and I would be out in the community and so we started you know the actually we were often invited to start Bible studies uh, in like soup kitchens or uh, we would do cooking groups right. or different things like that and uh, now when you said evangelizing yeah what did that look like because I know for some of us when we heard downtown walking the streets evangelizing yeah. we're seeing person on the corner yeah. maybe bible in hand and like thus saith the lord yeah so what does that no, no, walk yeah. that out a little bit for yeah. us yeah so uh, it was actually very interesting is uh i would um it, it it was mainly running into people you know on the street and asking if they wanted prayer and uh, so then I would pray for them and I would keep a little bottle of uh, anointing oil uh, and uh, um, and then I would pray for them and anoint them and uh, and uh, it, at that time we were seeing so many healings I remember I, could, I lost track of 
real legitimate healings. Like people were like, oh, hey, you prayed for me and I, I got better. And, I, and uh, it was, seemed like a very exciting time. I was like, I've never done this. And I, and I started to realize that like um, this, like I, I was studying uh, pneumatology at the same time at, uh, at, at uh, seminary. And, uh, it's the study of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, sorry, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we keep you here. Um, and uh, it, there was a lot of uh, teaching about how the Spirit moves among the poor and the marginalized in ways that you don't expect, and, and perhaps more more than 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 among the well established and yes. well healed. And uh, I uh, I saw that happen. Like I saw the Spirit move in ways I never seen before. I was I was longing for deep experiences of the Spirit and had not seen them been having been in more middle class type right. settings and and I saw healings and I saw you know people slain in the spirit I saw you know just yeah. things that I was like oh I wondered if this was real and, it, and it, indeed it was uh, more so than I ever expected and uh, yeah so that opened my mind and, and heart to, to getting to know the Holy Spirit and so when you prayed for people were you like yelling in your prayer no no no, no. I'm very quiet I'm, I'm 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 not very charismatic by nature I'm not very like uh, I'm kind of uh, low-key, I guess, and uh, so yeah, I would just just pray very simple prayers. Uh, and the spirit moved. Yeah, and the spirit moved. I want you to hear this, okay? Um, Todd is not a, a yelling, screaming, look at me person. What you're hearing right now is the legit Todd, and just where's God leading me? And I want you to hear this because it's you see someone, you pray for them, you expect the spirit to move. That's it. And, you, and it's not like if I yell louder, if I say the right words, if I'm with the right people. It's like, no, let's just be open to the Spirit and let Him do His thing. And that's what I'm hearing and that's what I want you to hear this morning is like, it's not about, well, do I have the gift to do this? Or like if I'm with the right people or if I say the right words. No, it really is, who is God bringing into your path and has He actually said, go pray for that person? Because He's going to do the rest of the work and that's... I'm, I'm feeling really encouraged in my spirit right now because I think sometimes we make it a whole lot more difficult mm. than it really is. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're uh, we're given we're given spiritual authority, and it it is Jesus and not our efforts or our techniques or anything like that. And and that's been I, I've seen that to be true because uh, yeah, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I was pretty I was untrained other than as a, a mental health worker not as a not in not in not in school or, or anything like that so, yeah yeah um, but then I slowly started tracking and taking seminary courses and all that sort of thing and uh, I, a lot of it was uh, confirmed and affirmed and I was like oh yeah this is this stuff is true so yeah so we I was uh, to continue the story yeah. I uh, I worked uh, there for about a year and a half I was uh, I would do a little bit of uh, part-time uh, crisis work uh, so you, um, I was uh, on a phone for uh, mental health crises and, and uh, we would we were called the mobile crisis team so if there was something needed we would drive to the place and that was, that was like how I also kept kept enough money <laughs> on the table and that sort of thing but uh, we that's how they ate yeah 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 but I we were also fed by um, sacrificial giving by Christians uh, I remember when I took this job, I, I, I quit my job, and my wife became a student, and so we didn't have any income. And uh, I was like, this is stupid, I'm a bad husband, I'm not providing. And uh, I remember we were driving to a meeting that I didn't want to go to, and uh, I get, the tank was empty on the van, and I had two parking tickets that I had to pay and didn't have enough money for. And uh, we go to the meeting, we talk, and it's uneventful. And then uh, someone comes up to me and shakes my hand, and I call it the uh, was it the Pentecostal handshake, where they there's money in the hand, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's enough money exactly to fill my tank of uh, gas and to pay uh, for the two tickets, and uh, and it was just a, like I've got you, Todd. Like you just keep obeying, and we'll we'll do this. And and there would be you know this was before this was before I was like on the denominational uh, yeah. thing where they could sub raise our support right like and so it was just like I was just like well God had to and people would we got checks for fifteen hundred dollars out of the blue I always wondered if that happened for real you know like you know and, but you have to put yourself out there before mm. the magic money comes like whatever that yes, is yes <laughs> I agree you have and, to take that step of yeah, faith 
Yeah, and so uh, that I I had always wondered if that was the case because you'd hear these missionaries telling these stories of like, oh wow, yeah, like we we were we had nothing, and then God just showed up for no like someone felt led to do it, and that happened over and over again, and uh, and we were never without. We paid our rent, we ate, we we uh, interestingly. Uh, <laughs> this is a weird thing too it's like so uh we we're provided for in that way but we actually um this was a, a very weird thing that we got to travel to cuba and mexico in the in 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 that year and uh completely paid for by other people but uh, <laughs> i i was like i was kind of like we're here we are working in a you know kind of a very poor neighborhood and we're traveling all over the world going to resorts and i was like this is inconsistent but i felt like you know, we had to, once I had to lead a wedding and once I, you know, like it was a family getaway sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, we're being taken care of more than like right. he's been luxurious with us. And, oh, uh, what a wonderful yeah. word to attribute to the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we were provided for well. Anyway, that was, uh, that was that experience. So I did that for a year and a half. Um, very exciting time. It was neat. I, I loved hosting what what was happening the the victories of the lord and and that sort of thing and people were coming in and, and involving themselves especially free methodist churches were really buying in and taking care of me um uh we uh we do the traveling and telling our story and, and fmc churches in the area like road up uh, um, harrowsmith pine grove uh yeah and uh, all the kingston ones as well like uh, polson and uh Kingston West, like they were helping me with all sorts of little projects. Right. They would come down, they would send volunteers, even as far as Westport. Uh, uh, the it was the, especially the rural churches would want to just sort of pour into yeah. into this weird little upstart that I was doing, and and so I was greatly encouraged by that. Um, first by by just the humble volunteers that would come and do stuff. Um, there was a man from Westport. He came down and he would. Uh, he would uh, sit in the Narcotics Anonymous um, meeting, and uh, he had no training in addiction or or theology or anything like that. He would just sit with the with the addicts in the in the meeting and pray silently to mm. himself. By the end, so he'd do it twice a week, and by the end, he was seen as like this father figure, and he would drive them around, and he was he'd started Bible studies, and he'd done all these sort of things just because he obediently would sit and pray and it was just just having these you know and he was retired he, he prior to that he was a janitor you know like and uh you know god does can use anyone when they put themselves out there and there's there was just these really cool things where i was like oh god's using this this person and that person yeah so anyway after a year and a half of that exciting time um we had a tragedy happen at at russell um al dozger's uh daughter passed away um very suddenly and uh, so uh, I became his pastor, which was a weird experience trying to walk with their family through that time. Uh, it was a big hit to our whole church. Uh, Al could no longer work after that. And then um, uh, <laughs> I slowly, uh, I had to fill in. Um, uh, at first and then I was asked to be a transition pastor and then uh, then finally asked to be the, the lead pastor and had to go from being an urban missionary uh, without any responsibilities other than just have fun it seemed like uh, like do exciting ministry to uh, learning how to you know work in a board meeting and right. all these other things that I wasn't uh, I didn't feel uh, trained for or ready for I wasn't I, I, I I liked the idea of being a pastor, but there was a lot of things I had to learn. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, it was a it was a good transition. Um, I was treated very well, but it was interesting. Uh, I was suddenly being called Pastor Todd rather than just Todd, and I thought they were making fun of me because uh, they were like, "Why are you call me Pastor Todd?" And like, "Because you're our pastor now." And I'm like, "Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'll take that." And yeah, um, yeah. and so then uh, for the next five to seven years I started uh, doing that uh, I got to I, I was ordained in 2020 in February 2nd 2020 so it was a whole bunch of twos and zeros and just before it was like sort of like the last big gathering we had uh, right. before the pandemic and it was a very beautiful thing and I was glad to to have had that experience of just being told like 
yeah, you're a pastor now. And, right. uh, and all these people believe it. <laughs> and all these people believe it. And it came from just one step at a time. Like when, when you started uh, your journey way back at Bethel, stepping into youth ministry, like you didn't think, oh yeah, you know, 10 years from now, I'm going to be leading a church. No, no. it really was as God presented the opportunity. 20 years. <laughs> 20 years in the making, you stepped into it. God opened up another opportunity. You stepped into it. And he showed up every single time. And and I love the word that you said, the luxuriousness of God, right? His love for us. And what a wonderful word. And, and we're told in Ephesians that we would, together with all the saints, grasp how, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of God that is in Christ Jesus and that you would know this love that surpasses knowledge and so when, when Todd said the luxuriousness sometimes when we think when we step into obedience it's not about experiencing the luxuriousness of God's love we just think it's like straight face I'm just doing this because God said no like that's not God's heart for us God's heart is the dad heart that says I'm taking you on this adventure I am with you and I'm going to provide for amazing ways. And like you said, you heard the stories of the missionaries that would get, you know, the $1,500 of the bills paid and you experienced that. And and so there's so much more that I want to share, uh, I want Todd to share with us because um, he said another very interesting word called compassion fatigue. And, and maybe you're like, ooh, what was that? Just tune it back a little bit, dial it back. So we're actually going to push pause. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to encourage you to tune in tomorrow to watch the second half. Of, of his next because you said you've been there for six seven years right yeah so so let me pray for Todd oh Lord God uh, I want to experience the luxuriousness and I know I have of your love and, and as Todd has and we, we pray that for those who are watching that they would just step into obedience and experience your your wowness that luxuriousness of your love and your provision your presence your grace and and Lord we we can't even begin to imagine what you have in store for us. We just need to keep saying yes to the doors that you open. And so encourage Todd today, I pray, and in the ministry that you bring to him, may he, I know he's going to continue to be faithful. Would you give him the energy and just bless and multiply, press down and flowing over. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, our dear friends, that's it. That's all. Remember to like, share, go outside, and help your community experience Christ and tune in tomorrow. Bye.